Hi, this is Patrick Adams with this week's Market Minute. We have a lot of interesting things to talk about. I think you'll find them really interesting. We're concerned about the geopolitical risk with, uh, with China now rumored to be supplying Russia with lethal arms. That's a real negative for the Western uh, uh, world and will likely have a big impact on the global economy if that occurs. So a, a major risk, need to watch what happens there. It could have a big impact on the stock market. Looking at the fourth quarter earnings, there's no way to have a positive spin on what happened in the fourth quarter. Earnings fell roughly 4.7%. And the chatter was from some of the cyclical companies that they saw severe destocking of inventories by their customers and that it would occur again in the first quarter, but then they'll start to see an improving trend. Well, we're a little bit concerned about the improving trend in 2023 as the economy will likely so slow in the second half of the year, but it seems to be set up to have a positive trend in 2024. So there's a famous economist named Ed Hyman. Ed Hyman is a very uh, well-regarded Wall Street economist, been very accurate over time, somebody I follow. He says the economy will roll over to a recession in the second half as the economy slows and companies become more negative about the outlook for their business. And it's become very popular now of companies cutting jobs to see a positive reaction in their stock price and to try to maintain their earnings where they are or, or potentially grow them by cost cutting. The Fed Fund futures, this is something we've been worried about for a while now, and finally it's going to the point of where we think it should be. The Fed Fund futures are now expecting roughly 5.4% in the Fed Fund's rate by June. That's a major increase from what it was a, a week ago at 4.9% by June. And then the uh, raises get shifted out, for, or excuse me, the cuts get shifted out further into 2024. So it's a major change in the outlook for the Fed funds rate. The markets are slowly adjusting to it. Um, our concern is the, the, the fundamentals are going to prove to be too negative to see a continued expansion of the stock market. Now last week the, the market began to decline a little bit more. It broke through the 20 day moving average. It's losing momentum. So I wanted to walk you through um, a chart of the S&P and some risk management techniques that we use. Now these are really early stage risk management techniques. And as you can see here, the blue line is the stock market. This is from March of, of last year. And then um, this line here is a resistance level. And then we have the red line is a 20 day moving average. And then I put the 50 day moving average on here as well. And you can see the green um, circles are where you get a buy signal, and the red is where you get a sell signal as it breaks through that 20-day moving average. The green breaks it through the upside, the red down, through the downside, and you get a short-term sell signal. So as you can see, that works pretty well. You got a sell signal here all the way down. You got a little bit of bounce. You went through the 20-day flipped to a sell signal again, you went lower. Now this saved you a lot of performance, a lot of capital, and this decline by getting out essentially here and getting back in down here um, in, in uh, roughly the July period. Big advance, again, broke to 20 day, you got out, um, and then you get back in way towards the bottom in October, and then nice rally, and here's all the tax loss selling that occurred uh, last year. This was a big drag on the overall stock market, the tax selling roughly down 7% uh, in this period. And then the stock market was set up to have a bounce because all this, um, this pent up selling that occurred um, really dried things up and allowed the market to bounce. So the, the market went up about 9% from the start of the year to the very high. Now it's starting to roll over again, breaking its momentum, breaking through the 20 day. We'll have to watch this this week to see if it breaks down to the uh, 50 day moving average 
uh, we, we see support down to that level. But if the political concerns uh, get elevated, then it might work very well break through this and test some of these lower support levels through here around the 3800 level. Obviously the 10 year treasury is the driver of, of the valuations for the stock market. So you could see the, the shape of the yield curve and the 10 year treasury down here now above 3.8%. It was about three weeks ago at 3.4%. So it's starting to have a negative impact on the valuations of the stock market. And we've always said above 4%, it becomes hard for the stock market to maintain its valuation and you'll likely see a, a pullback in that valuation. I'll show you it in another chart in a second. But we think as the Fed fund funds rate goes to roughly 5.4%, the six month and one year will gravitate up towards it as well. So you're gonna see these rates go higher and then it'll pull the 10 year up as well. It just has to, it has to pull it along up probably into this range right here between 420 and, and 440. On, on the yield, and that'll cause the the valuations to drop, probably something similar to you know the 16 or 15 times earnings. So the 10-year average is roughly um, 17 times earnings. The um, the 10-year Treasury has really has not been um, above. 4% any time during the last 12, uh, last 10 years, except for once here recently. So we can, we can see that the potential is to get a valuation correction of, of good size. So we don't think it's gonna go down to 13 times where it was uh, say in 2013 where interest rates were much lower, but it's possible. So the risks are heightened um, you know, at over 18 times earnings, it could get to, you know, roughly 16 times earnings, which is a pretty significant correction, along with the earnings uh, currently in a declining mode. So what to do with all this? Um, well, the Federal Reserve is in a restrictive policy. The economy will likely go into a recession. We kind of feel from the earnings reports that we saw it is in a recession. But I think most economists would say it's not there yet, and it's definitely a high probability of occurring in the latter part of 2023 or the, half, the second half of 2023. This will impact the stock market, um, and we're very concerned about geopolitical issues being the catalyst for a potential decline occurring you know, any week now. All this gets us to how to manage through this. So. We showed you a risk management technique. Um, it's a good point to be defensive, we believe. You can get back offensive, but it's a good point to be defensive. We got a little more defensive in our strategies this past week on Friday as we broke through that 20-day moving average. We see the decline as a big opportunity to make some money. It's very hard to make money with the current fundamentals and the slowing of the momentum in the stock market. We, th we think it's much easier just to let the market come down, maybe significantly, and then to set up for a nice investment looking out to 2024 and maybe 2025 as well, so having multiple years of positive performance. We thank you for your attention, and if you want to subscribe to our email copy of Mark in a Minute, please go to my website at Patrick Adams CFA, and we hope you enjoy this video.